If you don't think you medically qualify to fly a plane, think again, even if you have no arms. When I was learning to fly, I knew about the sport pilot license, but I always looked at it as inferior to the private pilot license. It had a lot of limitations that I didn't want to deal with. But since learning more about it, my mind has been completely blown, and I understand its incredible importance in aviation, giving wings to those who thought they couldn't fly. Like our friend Jessica here, who was born with no arms. We'll get to her in just a little bit, but let's talk about the sport pilot certificate a little first. I'm gonna Google this real quick and, uh, oh, look at that. The FAA calls it a license too. Anyways, uh, clicky here and a sport pilot certificate allows pilots to operate light sport aircraft. The medical requirements to use the certificate can be met by either a third class medical certificate or a US driver's license. So if you wanna be a pilot and you know that you have a medical condition that can keep you from getting a class medical, as long as you're a legally licensed driver, you're good. This is where our special guest, Jessica Cox, comes in. We invited her to the hangar to have a little talk about the Sport Pilot Certificate and how it changed her life. All right, guys, we're excited here to be with Jessica Cox, the armless pilot. Is it okay to say that? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> she is absolutely amazing, and if you don't follow her, you definitely should, because, I mean, what you do is absolutely incredible. But we wanted to bring you here today to talk about the Sport Pilot Certificate because that's how you're able to fly. So tell us a little bit about that and why it was the best option for you or maybe even the only option. Well, when I began my whole journey, it was definitely, there were a lot of unknowns mm -hmm. because no one had ever done this before. No one had ever flown a plane without arms uh, and with their feet. So it was really a scary, uh, fearful, journey at first thinking you know who will i mean would this be permittable yeah. permissible you know would they allow this to happen and so we were wondering about the medical mm -hmm. which is the automatic thing that you would think about which is something everyone's scared about when they yeah. want to become a pilot so and so when we thought about it we're like you know if there's a way around it um because i always think about ev from every angle not mm -hmm. just the you know the way everyone else does it yeah and is is there a way to get around this and that's why the sport pilot certificate was the answer the answer because it got you around it yes <laughs> tell us about that well for one uh i found out that my driver's license actually served as my medical with the sport pilot certificate. Really? That's it? Yeah, it was. And I had been driving for years. And okay. So that was accomplished. Mm -hmm. And as long as I hadn't been denied a medical previously, which I obviously never did. And I've heard that's a big deal, that if you go to try to become a regular pilot, you get denied a medical. That kind of messes things up a little bit. But so you went about it the right way to start with, which is important. <laughs> Exactly, and I also had to uh, get my certificate to continue as a student pilot, which basically I acknowledged by signing my name that I am in a condition that I, that I can fly. Yeah, and at that point when you were applying for your student pilot certificate, you'd already been flying and knew that you could, right? Yes. Yes, there you go. So everything, everything was good. Yes. <laughs> I felt like this whole sport pilot certificate, which only came out in 2001, mm -hmm. was almost like just the perfect path for me. Because, you know, if, if I had started training, I mean, I started training about 2005. Okay. So if it was just a couple e years earlier, I may not have known about that sport pilot certificate. Yes. And when did you become a pilot, a sport pilot? I became a sport pilot officially in 2008. In 2008. And what have you been flying? And ever since that beginning, when we found out that I needed an airplane that was considered a light sport plane, mm -hmm. the air coupe. The air coupe. That doesn't require rudders, right? It doesn't have rudder pedals. So that gave you the flexibility to fly, which is absolutely incredible. Yes. So if you had some advice that you wanted to give to someone who's looking to become a pilot and this might be a good option for them, what would that be? Well, for those who are looking to become a pilot, I think that this is a good starting Point. You know, mm -hmm. you want to go in, see if, if you can fly, if you want to pursue this, and you want to be able to get that very first kind of baby step, sport pilot certificate, or if, if you know, this is all that you want to do, I can fly up to altitudes of 10,000 feet, I'm allowed to fly one passenger, I cannot fly at night. Now, can you fly after sunset till like one hour, the twilight? Yes. Yes, that's awesome. That's like one of the, my most favorite times to fly. The Sport Pilot Certificate, it is a good option. It does have its limitations, like you were just saying, 
but still, if you want to fly, it's gonna give you that opportunity, so. Jessica is amazing, and she touched on some really good points about the sport pilot license. Some of those being limitations, like you're limited to light sport aircraft. You can only carry one passenger. You can only fly up to 10,000 feet or 2,000 feet above the ground, whichever is higher, and you can't fly at night. But for those who just want to fly recreationally, this could check all of your boxes. It can also be a stepping stone to see if flying is something you want to pursue as a career. It has half the hours requirements as a private pilot license, so it's a bit easier to obtain. In fact, you can check out our video on what it takes to get a sport pilot certificate down in the description. But the sport pilot certificate isn't just for people new to aviation. It's good for private pilots too. If something happens with your health that could keep you from getting a third class medical or no longer qualify under basic med, you can flex into the sport pilot privileges and fly light sport aircraft. Seriously, the private pilot certificate can get you flying and keep you flying longer as long as you're physically able. Now there's one catch to all of this, and that's if you've ever been denied a medical certificate by the FAA. If that happens and you're unable to get a special issue certificate, you no longer qualify to fly under the sport pilot certificate. With that in mind, let's go back to Jessica for just a second. Can I put in a little a word about what I'm up to now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I know that you guys have been doing some incredible stuff in the background and I'm like, rooting for you, so what's going on? So uh, taking that next step mm -hmm. to go ahead and I, a couple months ago now, actually January, I went ahead and went through the medical process. Yes, to become and a private pilot, to get a private pilot. third class medical, correct? Correct, so that we can build the impossible airplane. Is that what you're calling it? Yes. That's exciting. <laughs> the impossible airplane.com. <laughs> Nice. Because we have the URL. <laughs> Hospitalairplane.com. I'm going to put that in here. And we're building an RV-10 that will be modified for foot control. That's and awesome. And so in order to be an experimental pilot, I will have to get my medical, third class medical. Like I said, rooting for you. I hope that happens. I'd love to see this airplane. RV-10s is like kind of where my heart's at inside of the long term. Thank you so much for joining us here inside of the hangar and talking about the sport pilot certificate and updating us on your impossible airplane. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. You heard that right. She's putting her flying on the line and applied for a third class medical certificate with no arms. But she's working directly with the FAA on a special issue certificate, allowing her to fly the impossible plane that they're building. And to her, it's worth taking that step to expand her flying adventures. And we wish her the best of luck. And Jessica, we're really rooting for you over here. Now there is one last set of limitations that I forgot to mention, and that's that you can't fly out of towered fields in class D, C, or B airspace without additional training. And you'll need to get an endorsement that says you've been trained in towered field operations and can talk on the radios for each airspace. And you know what can help you with that radio part? Today's sponsor, Plain English. The best way to take control of the comms. Using their aviation radio simulator, you can practice your radio work for all stages of flight. They've got calls for taxi, VFR, IFR, non-towered fields, and all classes of airspace. With Plain English, you can develop real skills that you can take back to the cockpit. Deer Valley Ground, Cessna 75600. For more information, check the links down in the description and make sure to use our code FWTG when you sign up for a little discount on your subscription. Well guys, that's gonna be it for this video. If you have questions about the Sport Pilot certificate, ask them down in the description and I'll try my best to help out where I can. But as always, share aviation wherever you can and we'll see you in the next one.